in Tosk. He didn't buy a new one. Who in Tosk put the tag on? Hey, I even asked him. Yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks for coming along to uh, today's press conference, the second press conference, to uh, talk about the show Mersey Boys, which will be on Friday the 6th of March at uh, the Echo Arena here in Liverpool. As announced last week, we've, uh, we've got Zolani Tete defending his. RBF Super Flyweight Championship of the World against Paul Butler. Um, and Paul's looking to secure a, a second world title, a second weight. Um, I said to you at that press conference that Barry Matthews would be on the show um, and that we'd be announcing his opponent this week. It was worth waiting for. Um, I think by what's displayed behind me um, and what you've read in recent reports, it certainly has been worth waiting for. Derry Matthews will challenge Richard Abril for the WBA Lightweight Championship of the World here in his hometown in Liverpool at the Echo Arena on March the 6th. This is something that, for me personally, I'm, you know, I'm absolutely privileged uh, to, to announce and, and delighted to announce. Um, I sat down with Derry last year uh, and when we, when we first originally, just towards the end of 2013, I think it was, when we did, you know, we did have a deal. And I said, Derry, if you sign with us, We'll get you a world title shot within five fights. We've done it within four, and I'm absolutely delighted to, to have them, Derry and Danny Vaughan sitting up here alongside me to, uh, to, to break this news to you. This is, uh, this is a historical show um, for, for many reasons, from, but notably, not, not just because Derry's got his world title shot, but just for, we've got two world title fights on, both home, homegrown fighters, both from Liverpool. Um, uh, two world title fights on the same show. It's the first time this has ever happened, um, and you know, I keep saying it, but I'm very I'm, I'm privileged to be involved in, in an event like this. On the night, we've got six title fights. Um, we've also got Liam Smith, Kev Satchel, Jazz Dickens, Jack Catchell on the bill. Um, it's a fantastic night of boxing, and we fully expect that Mersey, you know, Mersey side to, to be rocking that night, and, um, and to, for, for not just Liverpool fight fans, but UK fight fans to come all, all over to, to, uh, to come see this, this show. It is called Mersey Boys and it's full of Mersey Boys. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's homegrown talent at its best. We're displaying Liverpool's finest. Um, and I think this, is the, this is, is the greatest boxing show ever put on in Liverpool, without doubt, in my, in my opinion. Derry ranked number nine in the WBA. It didn't take much convincing for them to, to sanction this, this bout um, against Richard Abril. Richard Abril. I'm sure it's not got a deal in the end, it's Richard. Um, and, you know, Abril will be coming over here to, to you know, not to lose his title. He's not coming here to, to you know, to, to give Derry a, a late Christmas present. He's coming over here to, to display his skills and, and to, you know, to take his world title back to Cuba, strike Miami, where he's from. Um, he extended Brandon Rios over 12 rounds. I think that's, you know, that's, that says a lot about him. Um, at the time, Brandon Rios was on a 10-win KO streak, and he managed to, to, you know, to put in a great performance. And, and um, you know, and look, he's, even though he got beat by Rios, I think he looked fantastic that night. Um, he's been three times he's boxed abroad, and he's won three times, and uh, defending his title in Finland last time out. So traveling is not a problem for him. Um, you know, it's, it's, it seems that you know, obviously he can go abroad and, and get a result. So Derry's going to have to be at the top of his game, and I'm sure that with his, you know, with his trainer Danny um, and the camp that he's set up down in Spain, um, I, I, I fully expect him to be at his best. He's looking younger and younger in every fight, in my opinion. Um, after the disappointment of Ormond, um, he put on a quite fantastic performance against Gethin, Martin Gethin at the Olympia, um, and really really taught um, Adam Dinsdale, gave Adam Dinsdale a boxing lesson. I think he was more buzzing after the Dinsdale fight, to be honest, because I think he was so proud of his punch-perfect performance. Um, and uh, you know, he had that famous Derry smile ear to ear afterwards, and, and now we're sitting here, and he's, uh, you know, it's amazing what a, a, a stand-up performance can, can, can lead to. I think if he'd, he'd laboured to uh, points went over Adam Dinsdale, maybe he wouldn't be here. So it's, you know, it's truly important never to take any fight lightly. And, um, 
and I'm, I'm sure we won't be taking Rich out very lightly. Win this, um, and there's potential uh, UK, all UK world title fights down the line. Flanagan and Norman fight um, for a WBO <coughs> in the matter. So the winner of that will go on to fight for the world title. So it sets up an interesting uh, summer for you know, for the, if, if, if it's a UK, all UK world, you know, world title fight, if, we can, you know, if, if things go the way we, we hope they'll go. We uh, have the two guys here, you know, Derry and Danny here, uh, to uh, answer any questions. I'm sure there's plenty, so uh, we'll open up the floor to you. Sorry, actually, first of all, sorry, I'd like to ask Danny to say a few words, and then Derry, and then we'll ask him some questions. Yeah, first and foremost, I'd like to thank Dan Francis, the Queensby, his dad, Richard, um, everyone behind the scenes to make this happen. It's been a very, very true part of mine today. It's been a long time coming, but um, you know, we're ready to take it with both hands. As Danny said, and um, Francis said before, when I was me and Francis in that last year, she said to me, go out there, get a few wins, and I'll guarantee you a world title fight. And he's done it in four fights. And well, I, I believe it's the best the best time's come for me now. 31, I feel like I'm in my peak, I'm in my prime. Um, I'm getting stronger and stronger every each fight and getting better and better. And, you know, I find the best the best fighter on the planet at my weight. So, you know, when I, when I beat Abel, I want people to, to pat me on the back, pat my coach on the back and, and the team and say, you know, you're doing it the hard way and that's what we're going to do. Thanks, Gary. And just not to... Uh... You know, to reiterate, we've got two two you know, guys from Liverpool challenging for one title here, but they're doing it in Liverpool. We've secured them home advantage to give our guys every opportunity to, to you know to get those world title belts around the waist at the uh, after after the fights and I think you know it just shows what belief we have in our guys and um, and and belief we have in our promotions. So I'm just <coughs> delighted to, uh, to 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 be able to provide that for you know daddies as well to be able to provide that for our guys. Any questions, ladies and gents? What's the key to beating someone like Richard Abbott? Richard Abbott. The coach, if you ask me. Yeah. Richard Abbott's absolutely top draw, so, you know, we've we'll been watching him for the last couple of weeks anyway. You already know a little bit about Richard. Everyone knows he's you know, an outstanding world champion, but, um, you know, we've seen the Chiefs in his arm and we know we're very confident to be winning the title. And what's Derry got over Richard Abbott that will cause him problems? There's a punch here as well, so, you know, I don't want to let the cat out of the back just yet. Danny, obviously it was a big performance game, just adding things there, and as Francis said, you looked really, like, younger in the ring. Uh, you listened to everything, what Danny said to you. Can we see another performance like that? Yeah, well, that's off again. I find it well, that's right at this time. I mean, no disrespect to Adam, you know, he's a good fighter, but he's not on the same level as Richard Zabro, but... I believe that I turn up on the night, I'll be telling you right in the world. Um, all I have to do is listen to what Danny has to, has to tell me in the corner, listen to his instructions, and I can't go wrong. If I do have him right in camp, what I know I'm going to do. I'm fit to feel strong mentally and physically, and the game plan I'm going to have, I think it's going to work, and finite, you want to see him do the be world champion. Gary, you've seen up real uh, a couple of times, and Obviously, Daniel will be studying and everything. Is there anything that gives you a little bit of hope in terms of his style or uh, the fact you've got home advantage? Or, you know, you, what areas are you drawing on that you think you can win this fight with? I just, I just know that, you know, everyone says that I'm a puncher, and, uh, and, but I can box as well. And I've got a good boxing brain and I've got to use it. Um, against the Richard, I've got to use everything I've got my power, my boxing brain, the home advantage, the crowd behind me, they've got to get, you know, give us a push. And, I know I've got what it takes to beat him. I didn't want to have a title 18 for now. I didn't want to have a junior Olympic gold medal for now. I can box um, and I can punch. So, you know what? I've got a little feeling he might underestimate me. And fingers crossed he does and he comes. And to me, to him, it'll, I'll upset him. But to us, it won't be an upset. I know, I know I can beat him. This will be your last silver at World Title, will it, if you don't win? So you just can't, obviously, imagine that. Yeah, but listen. I said that before. Great, great, great <laughs> fighters. There's loads of great fighters out there who don't get world title fights, who, who should get world title fights, and they don't, they're not lucky enough to get them. I'm just lucky enough. Francis' dad, everyone behind the scenes, has, has made it happen for me. And 
Maar als je ermee gaat, dan ben je gewoon een middel om city. Dan was zijn de middel om city, zo werd ik gekocht en maar ik heb wel veel dat ik dat ga doen dus een fight. Want we willen niet om city, dan kreeg ik wel een moeite gaan boven en dan moet je dat aan het halen. Als je zelfs persuasion did have real tight to come for his title on the line in Liverpool. Well, it's you know it's, it's a credible fight. I think you see you can't get people of Abro's standard to, to come over if it's not going to challenge him and give him a you know, credible credible fight. Because if they come over and get beat, then then it, you know it's not it's it's it's, 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 it's detrimental to you know to their quality and, and to the, what what people think that, that the qualities they have. Coming over here to fight there is a challenge for Abro. One he stepped up and taken. And fair play to him for getting on, on the road again and coming over. But, you know, Derry's ranked number nine, so, you know, his own government, the you know, WBA, the government body, um, you know, they, they are, you know, they were keen for, to push for the fight and, um, and Derry's earned it. So I think, you know, fair play to Rebel for coming over and, and taking the challenge. Derry, did you ever worry? You said earlier you've done it the hard way. Did you ever worry that you might not get your world title shot? Yeah, I do, I did and I didn't. Uh, you know, my fans are on the side, so I do. I believe they will do it for me, but, you know, it was meant to fight somewhere else and you know, they got injured, so now I'm going to take my chance. Um, I believe I deserved that shot before that, anyway, because he weren't even ranked in the top 15 in the WBA. I was, so I would jump, jump the bolt and, and, you know, got, to the, got the shot before me. It, it, I just don't understand it, I just don't know why the Dooley Bay have let it go, but you know, this is my time now. It's not, Andy, it's not about Andy Carter. People keep asking me questions about Andy Carter, this, Andy Carter, that. It's not about him, it's about me fighting Mitchie Dabble. And, and me and Danny going away, preparing the best we can, and finally you'll see, you'll see him in the champion. What's the motivation, what's the hunger that keeps driving you on? Just winning titles, I love winning belts, um, I, love, I love fighting. From a fine city, and you know, I love working hard in the gym. Uh, the, the team will walk around us, you know, we, we push each other in the gym. All the lads, Peter McDonough, Simmons, Butch, we all help each other in the gym, push each other on, and we're going in the right direction. And to be the first Dooley Bay World Champion in the camp will be, will be something great, and it only leads, you know, to big things for the other fighters. Success breeds success, and that's this the start of it. And how special is it to be fighting in front of a whole crowd? It, it's, a, it's a massive bonus, um, fighting, you know, in Liverpool, the Arena. I grew up on, well, I lived a mile, about a mile and a half away from it, so, you know, it's, it's my local venue and, you know, there's going to be 10,000 people in there, fight night, and it's going to be absolutely crazy in there, but, you know, when, when, when I'm in the ring, I'll be listening to one man, it'll be Danny, and, you know, Sam Blanc, heavy and out, getting there to do the job. Focus on the fight, after the fight, to now celebrate. And the announcement was officially muted a couple of hours ago. Tell us about the response that you've had to the third from friends, family and followers. It's been crazy to be honest. Uh, they look good at home. They got their to it and uh, they put it out there. And, you know, since then it's, it's gone absolutely crazy. Everyone wishing me luck and luck and I've had some, some bit of stick on Twitter. But, no, it's only common sense, it's only it's only an asshole, but you know, that, that drives me on. You know, mm. the people who doubted me, they doubted me for many years. The night I went to Oldham and boxed out my collar, eighty percent of the crowd in there doubted me. Twenty would believe that win and I won the fight. The echo here, I'm gonna have eighty eighty percent thinking I'm gonna win, I'm gonna win the fight, and now I'm gonna beat that Richard Abbott. No matter what he brings to the table, I know I'll have something special and and find out after I'll show it. And just listening to you now, you're absolutely convinced you're going to win. So what are the ambitions beyond that then? It's still a little too far, to be honest. Uh, get that one off the way and I'll sit down with, with Danny, with, with Francis. Danny will be manager and we'll, we'll, we'll plan what's next, but we'll, one fight at a time. I'm in the big league, beat be, be the double, I'm in the big league and this is like a semi-final. Danny, you'll be preparing over in Marbella. I mean, there's a great group of fighters in house in the gym, but I mean, how easy is it to <laughs> find somebody to replicate that real style? And he's got a very, very distinct style. He's got an awkward style, loose left hand down by his knee. He's a counter puncher, but there's plenty of them in England and, and overseas who we can contact. Um, and um, we've got two lined up anyway to be coming out in the next couple of weeks anyway. We move like Richard, so it shouldn't be a problem. 
just to uh, give you ticket information, um, so I simply said to the Echo Arena, uh, 6th of March, uh, tickets 40, 50, 75, 100, 150. Um, they can, they're available from the Echo Arena box office, 0844 8400 and Arena.com and from Eventim um, on 0844 249 1000 and Eventim.co.uk and as always we are live and exclusive on Box Nation. Any more questions? Derry, who do you think is the better fire between Abra and Crawford? To be honest, but both of them are world class fighters, both of them are world class. Everyone, you know, a lot of people say Crawford, a lot of people say Abel, but you know, I'm on the fence with that. It's, it's a really tough fight uh, with, with them, them two stay matched up. It would be a great fight, but you know, you couldn't, have, you couldn't pick a winner. It's a 50 50 fight. And Francis, I see some comments on Twitter today. It's not from me, but I just saw some people complaining yeah. that. Stephen Ormond's beaten Derry Matthews, but Derry's got a world title shot ahead of him, regardless of him and Flanagan fighting. So, what would you say to that? Sorry, say that again, Cody. Stephen Ormond, who beat yeah. Derry, Derry's got the title shot ahead of Stephen Ormond. Mm -hmm. Despite, obviously, we know Ormond and Flanagan are fighting, but what do you say to that? Well, that fight's already made. You know, Stephen and um, Terry were due to fight at the end of last year. Stephen had to pull out the virus. Stephen's ranked highly by the WBO, he's the WBO European champion. Um, so you know that fight's got to happen. Um, uh, if you know, if, you know, we make headway with the WBO with both those guys. Um, Derry's went to the WBO. The WBO are keen for him to, to challenge for the belt. And you know, whoever wins out, Terry and Stephen, like I said, eventually down the line, if, if you know, if actually, I'll rephrase that, when Derry beats Richard Abreu, um, you know, if Stephen thinks he's got another bone to pick with Derry, then I'm sure there's something we can look at. It's got a great light base in the country, you know, it's just it's a fantastic vision, it happened for a long time. And, um, you know, just, you, 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 you know, we could keep all these titles in, in the UK for quite a, quite a while if, um, if uh, things go, go our way. Did you look at a fight with Paul Gaylinares who won the vacant WBC title recently? No? No need, you know, this, this is the fight we wanted, this is the fight we got. There is a lot of interest in the lightweight division, as, uh, as you were alluding to there. I mean, do you feel that you, after the hard yards you've put in in your career, you are justified challenging now? I mean, yeah. this is your time, isn't it? I believe I'm the, I'm the, I'm the best lightweight in the uh, I've had an off, off night against Stephen Norman, but that was terrible. Uh, my own little lad that beat me that night. Uh, I was absolutely flat. But, no, I'm, I believe I'm the best. People praise on about Carl being the best. Beat him and knocked him out. His own, well, stopped him in his own yard. And I thought they beat him in the whole year by two rounds. So he got the draw. And, you know, Kevin Mitchell. They're all good fighters, don't get me wrong. Ricky Baines, they're all, they're all top, well, top, top fighters. But I'm the one fighting for the world title. I'm the one who's going to win the world title. And then they're going to be the ones who want me. The last couple of years, if I asked them for a fight, they'd say no. I was on me, Derry. He's on me, Derry. Mm. Now they're going to need me on Master Six. And there's always going to be criticism. You know, when Ricky got his shot against Martinez, people said he didn't deserve it. He took it his opportunity and went on to have a very successful reign. <coughs> you know, on the other side of that, Kevin Mitchell, you know, people said he didn't deserve to be fighting Cat Cedars. He didn't take his opportunity. You know, it's all about, you know, what's what Derry going to say? No, I'm all right, thanks. I'll leave that one. But, you know, this is what these guys. First lace a pair of gloves up for when they're 10, 11 years old is to eventually get the opportunity to fight for a world title. Um, and that's what he's in front of Derry, that's the challenge he's got. Um, and people who don't want to get behind him, that's, you know, that's their decision, but people who do want to get behind him will see it here at our arena on the 6th of March. You just mentioned the likes of the Burns, uh, Mitchell, and Tyler. Would them fights be made for the fact that they were maximum? Well, I don't think they're on Derry's level at the moment. Derry's fighting Richard or Brill. Um, I think. Um, they could all fight each other. They can all fight each other and we'll see who comes out on top. But I mean, in terms of Anthony, obviously we were, we were wishing a very speedy <coughs> recovery. But Derry's already beaten him, you know, and you know, maybe it's something down the line, but at the minute, 
we're here to talk about Derry Matthews, Derry Matthews and Derry Matthews, not about anybody else. Any other questions about Derry Matthews? <laughs> yeah, Derry, how excited was you when you got the news about the world title? Well, to be honest, I was sitting next to you, Bass. He tweeted something out about four or five days ago, and the fight wasn't even made. It was two days ago it was made. Um, I was fighting him. We had another opponent lined up, didn't we? That's just how I started off to him off the record, but I sort of gave him a little whisper, and then the next two hours later, it's on. You know, I was slippery over there. You told me that on the thing. He even put quotes on. Yeah. 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 I told him on the Thursday and he waited till Friday. Cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sit, Rick. Tell you what. I was, I, I was over the moon. You know, I was, I was on Aldi, but I was training on Aldi. And, you know, to, you know, there's nothing bigger than a world title fight in your own city. I am finding one of the best fights in the world. And on a great show with Paul Bulger yeah. fighting for the world title. That, you know, no one's put two world title fights on one night in the pool. And, you know, it's down to, to the public out here behind the show and, and give it a big boost and, and keep on trying to come back to the city with, with big shows and, and let's sell the place out. We've got Tom Stalker added to the bill as well. Um, it wasn't, he wasn't confirmed last Thursday, but he, he has been confirmed this week. So looking forward to seeing the return of Tom. Um, after a very disappointing night against Jack, but um, you know, I'm sure he'll be looking at it. Jack Catchell is also on the bill and um, I can catch back up with him. Looking forward to seeing Tom back out. Any other questions? Thanks very much for coming down today. Um, there will be available for one-on-ones and Danny as well. Thanks a lot. Okay, Cheers. We'll have the TV cameras first. Uh, for